It's Friday, September 17, and this is your Barbados Today News Update, so glad you could join us. Barbados has recorded its fifth COVID-19-related death, bringing the national tally to 57. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George disclosed that a 73-year-old Guyanese man died around 10 p.m. on Thursday night in primary isolation at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. He had an underlying condition and was unvaccinated. Meanwhile, another 110 people have tested positive for the viral illness. These results are from 1,787 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory on Thursday and comprise 48 males and 62 females, including 30 people under the age of 18. There are now 850 people in isolation. Since March last year, Barbados recorded 6,358 cases of the viral illness. To date, 123,950 people have received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine under the National Vaccination Program, and 97,050 people, that's 35.8% of the population, have received their second dose and are fully vaccinated. In other news this Friday, operators of some of the island's top food establishments say the new curfew is impacting their bottom line. As part of measures to control the spike in COVID-19 cases, Prime Minister Motley announced last week a 9pm to 5am curfew Mondays to Saturdays, and on Sundays the curfew will begin at 6pm and end at 5am. Operators tell Barbados today business has fallen off and some establishments have been forced to reduce their Sunday offerings, while others have opted to remain closed on the day. General Manager of Buzo, Denny Mansour, says their operations have been impacted, but they remain optimistic. It's um, very special this week, um, meaning that the new cutoff time is 9 o'clock for the guests and patrons. It requires persons to normally be home around 8, 8.30 to be able to get to the curfew. Of course, we have the affair of the staff being home after, because the Honorable Prime Minister has allowed us the two-hour grace period on both Monday to Saturday and then Sunday as well. So we're grateful for that, of course. Now what happens is we have found, especially this week, those numbers have dropped off. We are now trying to get a little bit more staggering increase in sales. We've seen it in the last couple of month, month and a half previously. Um, nowhere near where we were previously, obviously, 18 months ago, but we're grateful for it. And it gives us signs of strike for we were feeling good about it and seeing that things were going to get better, right? Over at the Abida by Accra at Enterprise Christchurch, Assistant Sales and Marketing Manager Stanley Muir says it's been tough, but they're trying to make it work. So we have seen a fall off in the local market um, due to the curfew, especially on Sundays, because we've had a very popular run before a weekend special. However, because the occupancy is up this weekend and for the last month and going into October and the season, our UK visitors have expressed some dissatisfaction with the new protocols. However, we are trying to make it work. Um, we've extended the hours. Um, the government has been gracious in allowing us to still operate under the normal circumstances as it was before. So, um, with time we expect things will kind of settle down as it relates to uh, persons being comfortable with the new normal. But at this present moment, we've not seen a very, very big fall off. In, in terms of like the Sunday dining and so on, has that been like a big thing for Barbadians to come out to the restaurant and eat? Or have you been seeing them? But earlier are just canceling reservations. Yeah, well, it has been it has been impacted. Yes, um, we've had some persons falling off with the bookings, mostly due to the rise in cases in the country, not so because of the curfew. Okay. Um, where lunch is concerned, though, um, our occupancy is up, so our lunch numbers have pretty much maintained the same. In the local market, has maintained the same for lunch as well. Dinner is the only dynamic that has been impacted really. From the change of protocols. The Barbados Alliance to End Homelessness today launched its newest campaign to help secure full ownership of its Price Street shelter. It's hoping to raise $1 million over the next five months, and according to President of the Alliance, Kimar Safari, Barbadians have already started to respond despite challenging economic times. And so to date, I think we started the campaign just like, well, well shall you about two weeks now? Two weeks now? And to date, we've raised over $15,000 in just. Um, two weeks without, as I said, having to do any marketing. I've just been pushing on Facebook. You would have seen our documentary. You would have seen um, stuff that we would have put out there. And so people would have been interested. And that is a testament in itself that people are willing to give despite each other. And as Samantha said, I echo that much more, is that we understand the COVID situation. We understand the pandemic. But remember too, 
that what you are going through the pandemic or what you're going through the struggles there are others that are going through and whatever you can do to help that other person that may have nothing compared to what you have that will be appreciated because safi stressed the campaign is critical since the baeh has until march 2022 to purchase the building he's optimistic that the alliance will be able to continue its work at its present location i know that barbadians are a given people a given nation nation and we we know that we come together when the time is necessary and we don't see any reason why it should fail but should it fail it means that whoever purchased the building as Samantha would have echoed we don't believe it was go is going to remain as a shelter so therefore it would put an end to the shelter as it is in its present form I don't know in the hard times if we are going to find somewhere else if we are going to find it to accommodate the amount of people we accommodate to do the type of work we done and this was the key reason for this building it this building alone is a complete function that we needed that we got three and four in all the states that we went to to be able to do this exact work there's regional and international news after this short break Regional news, new Bahamian Prime Minister Philip Davis today was sworn in as that country's fifth Prime Minister. Davis led his Progressive Liberal Party to a landslide victory, capturing 32 seats. Former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minister's Free National Movement caught seven seats. Prime Minister Davis signaled he's ready for the job ahead. We are going to be working all day today to settle on those matters, determining what, what uh, portfolios will go in which ministries, deciding how the ministries how large my cabinet will be, and then determine who will fill those slots. Prime Minister-elect Philip Brave Davis speaking to the first order of business for his government, having secured victory at the polls. The success in part due to the role females played in the party's campaign. We've had seven women elected to parliament, and the seven of them are pre-LPs. I'm so grateful to them. As I said, uh, they'll be working on those specifics right now for generalities. Several of those women now elected greeted their leader at Jet Aviation. Elizabeth member elect Jobet Colby Davis hailed Thursday's win as a great day for the Bahamas and female leaders. Uh, they put so much faith in us and trust in us, sending us out into seats that were very contentious, I would say. Strong seats showing that they believe in us, they believe we could do the work. The work started on the campaign trail and the job is now to continue to um, ensure that we are facilitating the needs, especially the most urgent needs of our constituents. My colleagues and I, we're ready to get to work. That is the most important thing. Making a return to Parliament, Alfred says, sharing similar sentiments as the newcomer, Zane Lightborn. Where we are is a challenge and a crisis that we've never experienced. But within this crisis is an extraordinary opportunity to reset. And that is what the blueprint proposes. And we now have to rise to that occasion. Further afield, the British government took steps on Friday to simplify rules for international travel during the coronavirus pandemic. We get the details from Euronews. Well, this is a very big shake-up, primarily in the COVID testing requirements which apply to travellers coming into England, which have been adding around £100, £110 or €20 Euros to the cost of most people's uh, individual trips. So you can imagine that for a family trying to go on holiday, but the costs really uh, add up. Uh, as, of, as, it, as it stands right now, there is a so-called 
traffic light system in place of green, amber and red this countries, green being low risk, red being high risk. But from the 4th of October, the so-called amber list of medium risk countries is going to be scrapped. And that means that everywhere that's not on the red or high list category, uh, everywhere that's not in those will be treated in the same way. Uh, from that date as well, there will no longer be uh, a need to take a test within the three days before you head to England. And then a further change happening at the end of October. If you are fully vaccinated, then you'll no longer have to take uh, one of those expensive uh, PCR tests two days after you arrive. They'll be replaced with a cheaper lateral flow test. It's worth stressing that there is still a red list for the highest risk countries. And anyone arriving from those countries, although only UK and Irish residents are allowed to come from those countries, have to stay in hotel quarantine at a very high cost of uh, a few thousand euro. Uh, that will remain the case, but the number of countries on the list has gotten smaller. The likes of Turkey and Egypt have been removed. The Transport Secretary Grant Schapp saying that this is now a simpler and more straightforward system, one with less testing and lower costs for travelling. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.